things I don't teach you in church. This one here will be uh, Daniel 2 and 32. Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the, the statue and the stone. Uh, <coughs> a lot of people get most of the understanding of this. Uh, so I'm just going to bring out a few little fine, finer points of it. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the head of gold. Everybody understands this. Uh, the silver was the Persians, uh, and they were they were the arms and chest of silver. The Greeks were brass, and the Romans iron. And the end times, the feet of clay and iron. What people, most people, don't understand. All right, Nebuchadnezzar, his his empire took in so much gold. The Egyptians had a lot of gold, and I'm, I know a lot of people have seen pictures of the tomb of King Tut, how much gold he had. Uh, it pales in comparison to the legends surrounding Nebuchadnezzar and his gold hoard. The amount of gold that he had was just astronomical, and it's just it's just unbelievable. Put it put Egypt to shame for the amount of gold. Now the Persians, the Persians paid their army, and they had a massive army. They paid all their soldiers in silver. Uh, it was a mark of honor for a lot of their soldiers for their horses to have bits made of silver. That uh, silver was the number one thing in the whole nation, and and the whole statue goes that way. The the Greeks were bronze weapons, bronze shields, bronze helmet. Uh, the Romans they brought in the Age of Iron. Uh, their swords could beat down anything else. Their shields had iron. Uh, their armor had iron. It's just that just broke the, piece, broke the pieces of everything that it just came in contact with. And then, for some unfathomable reason, reason, they say, Rome ended and there's this long gap with nothing there. But, I'm sorry, the, the statue is head to toe. The Roman Empire, while Rome, let's see how to put this, Rome may have lost its world domineering influence, it did not lose its cohesion, was, I guess that's one way to put it. Uh, the Catholics were set up in Rome when Constantine moved the capital to Constantinople. Uh, the Catholics used a forged letter to take over from Rome and most of the empires in, in that era from 300 BC up to the present called themselves the Holy Roman Empire and the Catholic Church was the dominating influence throughout the region. And uh, so while it may have not been the Romans ruined militarily from Rome. It was still the Roman influence throughout that area. Very physical, very, very pervasive. Uh, the Pope could excommunicate a king and all the other kings would turn against him. The, the politics were just unreal. But anybody that studied history knows that the Holy Roman Empire from 300 on was still run run there and then because the statue had two legs you had Constantinople being the capital of the eastern part and while it is true that the Muslims rose up in 600 and eventually conquered throughout the region that they still had the overriding hold of the other part of the Roman Empire and that they just 
basically just changed religions. It went from Christian dominant to Muslim dominant. But it's still the same region, still held together. And so the two legs come on down to the cons come on down to the current time. And the current time has a unique feature that you had the miry clay and the iron. And a lot of people have always guessing, well, when when does that come in? You know. <coughs> there are a couple thoughts about the feet. One, uh, it talks about there being two different seeds. The seed of men and the others. Anyway, in World War II, about that time, and give a little before and after. Uh, Mankind, east and west, started using steel reinforced concrete. Now, when it's being put together, it looks like miry clay and iron. Uh, together, they are stronger than either one are separately, even though they don't mingle and they, they don't mix. And, uh, the concrete encases the iron and it makes a more solid more strength than either one of them separately and in that case then uh, Russia and the United States about the same time started incorporating steel reinforced concrete and, uh, and that was the sign that we have entered into the feet zone. Now, you will know when we get to the toes when the world government, i.e. the United Nations, sets up ten kings for ten zones. Uh, currently they're called, what are they called? Ecological zones. Uh, uh, you could research it. Um, I know a lot of people tr attribute it to the uh, conspiracy theorist stuff, but uh, so much stuff of, of the conspiracy theory ilk is is coming to pass. And when it does come to pass, the other side says, "So what? You know, you know they knew it was coming anyway." So. As you can tell, with concrete, steel reinforced concrete, we are in the last days, and it won't be long before the Ten Kings, uh, Israel being the time clock, uh, they came, they became a nation in one day in 1948. And the question is, is how long of a generation is a generation? Uh, that's why we've had, over the years, a number of people proclaiming the end is near because they take certain scriptures and say okay here a generation is 34 years I think that's what it is in the genealogies uh, in other places it seems to be 40 in other places it's it's other stuff I mean the 40 year one was the 1988 ruckus about that being the end of days uh, the year 2000 was another one, and you know, uh, you have a full generation being 70, and if by reason of strength the, the Lord said you'd have 80 years, whichever one it is, before the pe before anyone born, before Israel became a nation, before all those people die, everything will be fulfilled. So. Irregardless of what you think or what you believe, uh, before the last person dies who saw Israel become a nation, uh, everything in, in Revelations and all that, uh, Revelation and, and a lot of the Old Testament prophecies, they will be fulfilled. So keep looking up, get ready to go, and keep on working until the Master shows. God bless.